Let's go ahead and get rolling. So welcome today to our CEO to CEO conversation. We've got a couple of housekeeping things before we get rolling. Today's all about mobile and cloud and digital transformation projects and success. Wanted to mention a few key things here as we get started. First of all, I'm excited to announce there's not a single slide today. We've all had enough of uh, death by PowerPoint on the Zoom and webinar type events. So we're going to just have a live conversation here with Alan and Patty. We're excited to be able to bring that to you today. We are recording this session, so recording will be made available to all the attendees and registrants here in a few days. As part of this, we want to make this interactive. So there's two ways to interact today. First off, you can use your Q&A tab to ask questions of our panelists. As I moderate today's session, I will be watching the Q&A for questions, and we'll see what we can fit in during the session or answer the questions at the end. In addition, we've set up Zoom today to be an open chat environment. That basically means that you all can chat with each other. Be sure to set your audience when you do that to panelist and attendee, and you can then interact with others in the chat environment. I will be monitoring the Q&A for panelist questions. I will not be moderating the chat for panelist questions. So without further ado, then, I would like to invite Patty to introduce himself and his company. The floor is yours. Hey, thank you, Brian. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, my name is Patty, Patty Vishwanathan, um, founder of C3M Cloud Control, um, a cloud security company based uh, out in the US established around two years back. Um, I was a consultant working in the US for probably around 10, 15 years. Uh, seen a lot of companies migrate to the cloud in the early years, probably you know five to seven years back when a lot of things were new. A uh, lot of challenges faced by a lot of customers had me working out details around starting this company. We started in 2018, um, focuses primarily on cloud security. There are various aspects of cloud security that we cover, and we'll talk about that in today's session. And uh, we have established offices in uh, the US, Europe, and in India. And that's me and C3M. Thank you. Alan, would you like to introduce yourself and uh, your company? Absolutely. And I, uh, you know, excited uh, to be here, excited for everybody to join us. And my goal is to try and also make this as lively and informative as possible, because uh, we really want to make sure people, you know, walk away with something of use uh, to go forward. So I'm Alan Snyder. I'm the CEO of Now Secure. Um, fundamentally, what Now Secure is focused on is making sure that the mobile apps that you build and the mobile apps that you use are secure and private. And that, you know, through the history of the company, we've got the world's best experts to go make that happen. Uh, we are, you know, we truly believe that automation and getting security built into that uh, process for the apps and the mobile apps that you build and use is the better way to do it. And it fits into the digital transformation discussion that we'll be having today, because what we see that folks really want is speed. How do I go faster? Right. How do I go faster in terms of what we're doing? So with that, I'll turn it back over to Brian and I'm excited to continue the discussion. All righty. So we've got a series of conversational topics where you agreed to in advance. As I mentioned earlier, you can also use the Q&A to add questions for us to try to weave into the conversation. So let's get this rolling. Right. We're here to talk about digital transformation, leveraging cloud and mobile as two core components. So I'd like to get started with uh, some observations from Deloitte and then ask a question. So Deloitte describes digital transformation as a process of rethinking business models blending technology and innovation to solve challenges in your organization. Through the initiative, organizations can transform how they engage with their customers, their employees, their partners, create new businesses, new services, new capabilities, and even disrupt their current markets. Internally allows organizations and really enables or empowers them to adjust their culture and build new ways of working. So to Patty, for the organization you're speaking to, what does the digital transformation look like today? Yeah, it's a, it's a great topic and uh, it's a broad topic. So for the sake of the audience, let me curtail my opinion to what it means for the cloud because it's an inevitable part of digital transformation. Almost every other organization today is in a rush to transform their business, to transform their processes. And as part of that, there is a lot of shift to the cloud, public, private, hybrid. 
and uh, it's also an area where organizations see a lot of challenges uh, when you when you say that okay let me let me adopt the cloud and we let me bring in a good cloud strategy to accelerate my digital uh, process it comes with it two core challenges one you have in house teams that are very used to dealing with traditional uh, enterprise infrastructure and you know you could probably see that in the last one year all of us are staying home uh, there is a pandemic out there and um, majority of the organizations who are having the strategy well me let me let me bring out this digital transformation initiative and roll it out in the next two years sort of had to expedite that and we're seeing a rush to the cloud a lot of organizations are saying okay let me adopt the saas process let me uh, transfer our workloads to the cloud but let us bring in a safety net in because everybody is under the perception that well, the future is the cloud and we have to migrate there but there is a big skill set and a gap there because uh, the traditional it security teams who are tasked with protecting your in house infrastructure now has to be ready to protect the cloud and they are not cloud experts so there there is this whole migration happening but now uh, there is a skill set gap and this will widen because it's not going to happen overnight your it it sec teams or your skill gaps that are needed for maintaining your cloud security or uh, posture on the cloud is not going to happen in a day so in the prices along with this digital transformation initiatives will need to factor in well I, we can make the move but how do we move securely what sort of controls do we bring in that i see is one of the core challenges uh, organizations are facing today so alan your thoughts on uh, state of digital transformation in the marketplace yeah thanks brian so when you really think of what's going on it, it is fundamentally a enormous opportunity for organizations because the way i view it is we're really saying, okay, we've gone through the web uh, revolution, the internet revolution, we've added mobile. Now we're gonna take a step back and rethink how do we put all these things together? So I view it as it's a gargantuan opportunity for organizations to almost say, we're gonna start with a bit of a clean slate and we're gonna go look at all the mistakes we made previously. And again, the mistakes were very logical mistakes because things were done incrementally over time. So it was hard to anticipate. So when I look at digital transformation, it's really, this is Deloitte piece said, it's two pieces, right? It's the, I'm going to change the way I interact with the customer across the multi-channel, all of my digital properties and my physical properties. And how do I bring them all together to make the customer experience better and to release products faster? But at the same time, I'm going to change everything in the way I do that or internally as well, and I'm gonna move more of that workload to the cloud. I'm gonna go and organize things differently so that I'm also more flexible on the back end. So the opportunity is huge, but really when you think about the, the task at hand to go do that, that is a very daunting uh, task uh, because there's a lot of thought that needs to go into how do I, you know, it's not simply you know, lift and shift from the, uh, you know, uh, data center into the cloud, it is truly, how do I change the way I interact with the customer? Uh, and so we'll go through that more, but to me, it is an enormous opportunity. All the things that we've always complained about, <laughs> about why didn't somebody, or how can we do it better? To me, it's an opportunity to go fix all of those things. And I love it. Indeed, and, and you talked to, both of you talked about the enormous opportunity. There's also the collision with COVID and the pandemic, right? So according to Gartner through 2004, um, for, through 2024 rather, businesses are now being forced to accelerate their digital transformation. The pandemic itself has been so disruptive that five-year digital transformation programs are now being smashed into five-month digital transformation programs. And a lot of this is driven by remote work, remote customers, remote employees, and this notion of more digital touch points in the day. So, Alan, how has the pandemic changed the landscape of digital transformation and the customers you've been working with? Thanks. Yeah, well, it certainly accelerated. That's been well documented. I won't go into that. Um, but what I'd say has kind of been highlighted more so is also the need for flexibility that I think that previously while everybody understood it, it wasn't quite as acute because that flexibility may be, oh, we're doing everything remotely via VPN, that doesn't give me the flexibility I need, or that uh, we had uh, 
one customer that, you know, when a lot of like COVID forced the shutdown of physical properties uh, that removed a lot of the way that customers would interact with the business. And it really showed the business that your digital assets must recreate all of the physical capabilities that you may have. Like we had a bank that they had a huge push on their mobile app to basically make the mobile app the equivalent of the branch because all of their branches were shut down. They did uh, business uh, substantially uh, in Africa. And so their customers interacted with them via the mobile app. Well, they lost the physical presence. So that flexibility piece really became important. You saw that in cloud-based services, uh, providing much more flexibility in terms of the ability to access and run uh, versus the uh, enterprise data centers. So in my view, the pace accelerated, but it really came to the point of the flexibility about how you deliver services to customers really came to the forefront. Now, there is a negative piece too that I think uh, should be uh, noted. And that is, we also saw everybody rush to get these capabilities in. And let's just say, in my view, uh, the attention to detail regarding security was not what it should have been. Uh, and I think that, you know, we're going to pay a price for that over the next four or five years as people go and figure out, okay, I had to deploy quickly. I didn't necessarily deploy securely. There's a lot of gaps that need to be closed. Yeah, we've uh, seen that ourselves. We've got a, a breach tracker on the NASCARE website, and we've seen that this year alone, uh, the number of breaches in uh, mobile digitally transformed type of applications is 2x what it was over a year ago. So, um, so Patty, how is the pandemic changing, you know, changing things and accelerating things around digital transformation from your experience? Yeah, so some great points by Alan. I'll, I'll just add what I've, I've been seeing, especially in um, Europe and APAC. There, is, there has been a lot of move to the cloud, even in the US, so, you know, if you to take, talk ratios, it's probably 50% Europe and then uh, in the pandemic induced. A lot of organizations accelerating their digital strategy. And you know the big part of it is a lot of organizations who hold a lot of customer data, PIA data, financial data, because they have to do it, they are moving all of these stuff to the cloud, public cloud. And inherently, there is no perimeter there in the public cloud to start protecting you, giving you that sense of security. Well, you know, I put a firewall around anything. So, you know, my, my data is safe, my users are safe, my applications are safe. So when you move to the public cloud, there is also this skewed misunderstanding that, uh, well, Amazon or Google or Azure is going to take care of our security in the public cloud. But if you look at it, all the public cloud service providers have pub clearly published a shared responsibility model, which clearly says, well, we are responsible for the security of our infrastructure. We ensure multi-tenancy, physical security of our data centers, and multiple other things. Whereas you as a customer moving your workloads, uh, moving, shifting your applications to the cloud, creating your firewall configurations in the cloud, that's entirely your responsibility. You have to follow best practices while doing that. And if you are part of an industry that sort of mandates you to be compliant with some regulations, let's say GDPR or high trust or HIPAA, you have to ensure that tomorrow when an auditor comes in and then, you know, questions uh, your uh, organization will show us proof that you have complied with all of this. You need to be in a position to do that. And that is where uh, we see a lack of understanding induced by this pandemic, right? Everybody is in a rush, let's move there. But now that they are there, a lot of organizations do not have, first of all, I, as I was telling, there's a skill gap. So they don't have the skill set. Uh, or the resources to go ahead and start looking into it and saying, okay, are we having a good uh, baseline security posture in the cloud? That's one problem. The second problem is uh, uh, there's a lot of misconfigurations that happen. When you, and it is bound to happen, right? Because you are having the same IT team uh, you used to in implementing controls on on-prem, implementing controls in the cloud. They are bound to make mistakes. And when those misconfigurations happen, I, I to, last week, I wrote a blog on how a lot of customers in the cloud are getting breached and they're getting misutilized for crypto jacking activities. Uh, you, 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 you get hacked 
and a lot of organizations do not even know that they are hacked. Uh, miners get in, they spin up a lot of uh, servers in uh, the customer's environment, and then suddenly you get a bill from AWS or Google saying, well, your bill for this month is 50000 or $100,000. And that's when you're going to be surprised and then reaching out. So th that is bound to happen because this industry at large is not very used to the cloud. The cloud is not easy to understand in a day too, right? There are hundreds or thousands of services, every cloud service provider are. So that is, that is what we are seeing in the industry at large, especially induced by the pandemic. So Alan, you know, if we build off the, the cloud part of this, there's also the front end piece, right? So there's the mobile, there's web, uh, both of those have a role in, in digital transformation. How do you see organizations focusing their efforts in this mobile versus web kind of world where the users can be anywhere using any kind of surface? Or device? Yeah, great, great question. It's a mixed, um, it's a very mixed uh, set of uh, items that's going on. So let me lay it out. And that is what we see, and this is supported by industry data from Comstore, Adobe Analytics and others, but also when we talk to our customers, traffic is overwhelmingly, when I look at application versus application, web application versus mobile application, it is overwhelmingly shifting to mobile apps. 69% uh, uh, of the traffic in the US, and actually what you see is outside of the US in certain regions, it's actually higher uh, than the 69%. And the rate of growth continues to, to go up, uh, which is actually really interesting. So what we also see is that it makes good sense of why it goes up. And I'd actually encourage folks, go look at your own data and your own organizations or those that you're working with. Because what we see is a pretty bright line around the age of 30. And so it's a demographic trend. The farther you are away from 30, in essence, the older you are, the more likely you are to be web only. Now, the flip side is the younger you are from the age of 30, the more likely you are to be mobile only. And we see that march of time in those numbers and it's very clear what is um, coming is that uh, the, the folks, because of the sensors and the mobile, because of the better data and the capabilities you can get in mobile, it's always with you. You're just seeing more of that traffic shift to mobile. Now, that's the interesting side, and we're seeing that across the board. We're seeing companies invest very heavily in mobile. That's the good news. The bad news is there are several myths about mobile um, that are just flat out not true, right? The fact that uh, Apple and Google will vet the apps. Therefore, uh, it's impossible to build an app that's insecure. Uh, that is not true. The fact that the apps don't have much data on them, so doesn't matter if they're breached. Well, that's also not true because that app does have authorized access back into your cloud or your enterprise services. So it is every bit as risky if it was uh, improperly uh, developed and insecure as a web app. And then the other piece is a lot of folks were, oh, there haven't been any big mo major mobile app breaches. Uh, that is also really, really uh, untrue. Uh, it is shocking and the rate of mobile app breaches is going up and it makes sense. The attackers are following the traffic. Uh, so my prediction is, and the attackers are going where the easy pickings are and the easy pickings are, well, if you're not securing uh, mobile, well, I'm gonna go attack that because what I really want is authorized access back into your cloud, right? Because I know that's where the majority of the data lives. So let me go breach the app and then away I go. Now, there is a nice, really positive thing on this that I think is really important as well about mobile. So I give you the good, the bad, and I'll, I'll close with some of the good. And that is mobile apps are dramatically easier to secure because they're built on a modern operating system from Android and iOS that is substantially more secure. You start on a much more secure foundation. So you still have to do it and you have to invest in the security, but it is not nearly as difficult or as challenging. Um, and that's what we see is a lot of times that the breaches uh, that are a result of really minor items that just a small amount of security analysis and testing could have easily identified and corrected. These are not hard problems to solve because you're dealing with a much, much better foundation uh, than you have with uh, web. So, so thanks, Alan. I think that, that uh, for a lot of people, it's a surprise, but not 
that mobile dominates digital traffic and time. And most people are ignorant of the fact that as mobile is a gateway to the enterprise, right? It's a new attack vector that the bad guys are exploiting. Patty made a really good point about the cloud, right? Cloud is now a critical component. A lot of organizations don't really understand how to best leverage cloud and the security in cloud. Can you, how are organizations choosing cloud? Single cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud? Can you help us kind of understand, Patty, the, the role of cloud and cloud decisions and architectures now as part of digital transformation? can be very surprising to CIO CISOs when, you know, they, 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 they think they are single cloud and then suddenly some business vertical comes up and says, hey, we have put this stuff in Google. <laughs> and uh, we've been surprised literally uh, in multiple cases where, you know, we, we've let, no, we have multiple customers who say we are single cloud, they subscribe to our solution, start using the solution and then, uh, during the discovery phase, come back and say, hey, you know what? We discovered we have some presence in Google and Azure. So, you know, we had to start onboarding those accounts too. The reason why a lot of organizations pick multi-cloud, well, it is very strategic. It could also be compliance. But majority of the cases, it is because one business team feels that, you know, they can accelerate better by using one of the offerings that Google provides or Azure provides or AWS provides. And that's, and that's how uh, most of the multi-cloud strategies start. And then what we see is a consolidation in one cloud. Most organizations go that way and then say, well, let's make uh, AWS the primary or GCP the primary and then uh, because some of the business verticals do need uh, services from these other cloud service vendors, let's make sure we have coverage for them. Uh, but the making that move also dispels a lot of myths around the cloud, right? Because there is this common misconception too that the cloud is insecure in the data center. You sort of have a sense of security because you're behind the perimeter. I would argue it is exactly the opposite because the cloud sort of gives you fine gain controls into all of uh, all of the uh, visibility and all of the monitoring aspects that you would need from a security angle. If uh, from a CISO, you should look at this more of as a de-learning from the controls that you had in-house. And that's a better way to go ahead and uh, start doing security because now you could literally ask your security teams, can I have full real-time visibility into all of the security controls that are there in the cloud? Uh, Multi-cloud becomes more of a challenge because now your, your teams, are tasked with uh, learning how security works in one cloud. And now that same team has to now understand how does it work in the next cloud. And both those clouds are totally different. The way different uh, uh, services work, the way compute work, the way uh, networks work, the way identities work. So yeah, there are those, those are main challenges uh, that organizations face, especially when they adopt a multi-cloud posture. So I'm gonna gonna shift into uh, you know we've talked about the pros and and cons of mobile and cloud to a degree. Want to kind of drill into realities? I think um, Patty, for you, uh, according to Gartner, through 2022, at least 95 percent of cloud security failures will be the customer's fault. Um, so so how are they protecting themselves? How what's the guidance for for folks on this on this session today to really understand how to prevent being one of the 95 percent? Yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll go back to uh, what I said earlier around the shared responsibility model. If you are an organization moving to the cloud, you really need to you, your project teams, your security teams need to, need to get a good wrap around what is that shared responsibility model? What is it that you as an organization are responsible for securing in the cloud? And then start looking at how do I get there? First of all, how do I get a baseline of where I stand today? And when, when an organization moves to the cloud, and especially today, uh, if you're an organization trying to move to the cloud and you are part of the security team, you're a CISO or you're a director, VP, there are a lot of terminologies floating around uh, in the market. And if you look at the Gartner definition of this segment, uh, they, there are probably like four to five categories. One is your 
uh, CASB solutions, which sort of sit between the enterprise and the cloud and monitor who's doing what, uh, so accessing what SaaS services. Then you have CSPM, which is your cloud security poster management, which helps an outside in view, right? Around how secure an infrastructure is. Do you have any loopholes in your infrastructure, et cetera? And then uh, there is this uh, new term, which is coined probably like six months back, CIEM cloud infrastructure entitlements management. If you break it down into simpler terms, it's more uh, identity governance for the public cloud. How do you manage your identities? How do you get visibility in your identities? And then you also have uh, CNAPP, which is cloud native application protection platforms, which is more of a convergence of CSPM and workload protection, which is another segment, the CWPP. So are you going to be confused when you come in, uh, especially uh, starting your security journey? Yeah, because there's so many uh, stuffs to uh, secure and so many technologies and so many vendors out there but what is what is it that you primarily need to start with well first of all let us make sure that we have locked our gates and make make sure that intruders can come in and cspm solutions uh, give you that capability cspm solutions tell you what are the best practices that your organizations should follow in the cloud for example in C3M, we try to help customers baseline their environment by shipping with a lot of out-of-the-box security controls for the cloud. There are best practices for AWS, there are best practices for GCP, Azure. And then as customers, you would also need to be compliant to different uh, regulations. It could be Hypervest, it could be FedRAMP. How do you uh, understand what are the best practices or policies that you need to enforce in the cloud? That's one area. The another key area that organizations struggle with is well, what do I have in the cloud? You should know clearly what is it that you have in the cloud to first start uh, segmenting it and then start securing and applying the right sort of security policies to it. So visibility is key. Uh, you need to understand, especially if you have a multi-cloud poster, what do you have in compute? What do you have in networks? What do you have in identities? And uh, what is the critical data that you have in storage? You should segment that, make sure you have a central visibility to all of these four key components. Once you have that, then make sure that whatever enterprise specific policies you want to enforce should be enforced because every enterprise is different. You're going to have different uh, requirements. You may want to say, well, this is the uh, list of approved images that you want to use. This may be the list of uh, uh, IP addresses that you want to whitelist. This may be the list of tags that you may want to enforce, all of that. and. Uh, one, one core area that you will struggle with when you move to the cloud and start looking at your posture is, how do I get a unified view across all of these cloud service providers? Because all of them implement a lot of things differently. So you need a solution or a service, or you, you can build it organically, but one service that takes a holistic view of all of these and gives you one unified single pane view across your multi-cloud infrastructure and a, a simple and easy way to create custom policies and enforce it across your cloud infrastructure. Once you have it, once you have your baseline, then you know where you stand today. Well, I am probably following 40% of the best practices in the cloud and I have this many uh, high risk uh, issues in the cloud. Now, how do I better my score? The, the same solution should be able to inform and guide and uh, guide you uh, in taking the necessary steps to reach there. And it could be uh, automation, it could be a, a good detailed reports that help your project teams or security teams go ahead and start um, correcting those. And remember, there is this misconception that the person who is looking at all of these know how to fix them. They do not. And that is what we have learned across the industry. They do not know the cloud, uh, especially if you're looking at SOC teams. So uh, how, do you, uh, how do you enable them? Uh, how do you make use of their time and make them prioritize and work on the most high risk uh, issues for your enterprise? That's something that you should look for when you're evaluating solutions like this. Thank you, Patty. Yep. I think, you know, as we as we look at the security challenges, you know, according to Gartner through 2022, interesting, it's the same year, uh, mobile app security failures will be the biggest mobile threats to enterprises by and large. 
Um, so mobile is clearly a, a critical component of digital transformation, Alan. I'm actually going to ask you a two-part question, including one that just came in from the audience. So the first one is, what are the security risks and how are organizations addressing them with the modern mobile applications and smartphones today? And one of our guests, our audience guests, would like to know, what about IoT and things like VR and other types of emerging technologies that are mobile connected or mobile replacing in the future? So today in the future, Alan, for you. Yep. No, I appreciate that. That's that's a good question. In fact, I think the first thing to, to really fundamentally understand is that mobile apps are different from web apps. And the reason it sounds very obvious, the fact that I even have to say it is sad, but what I can tell you is from what we see in the market is I guarantee you what the vast majority of the market is doing is using web app security tools to test mobile apps because the web app security tool marketing said we can do it. Uh, well, that's true. They can do a little bit, but they can't do enough to actually secure you, right? And there's gargantuan differences, right? The mobile app is physical code running on this device. So I, the attacker, have the ability to actually inspect your code. It's not in a web browser and protect it. Also, the way data transmission is done and secured is very, very different on mobile apps than it is on web apps. So those tools by definition cannot do and get you the coverage that you need. And that's what we see that mistake is that folks are listening to some of the web tools say we do it. And yeah, they do some, right? It's not that they provide no value. They just don't do enough to fully secure it. So the other piece that I think is really important, and this is picking up in some of the things that Patty was saying about the cloud, is when you look at mobile apps, some 20 to 30% of a mobile app is somebody else's code. It's an SDK from something else. So this is what I would call the accidental cloud because those SDKs are somebody else's service that is almost certainly some sort of cloud service, be it advertising, authentication, whatever it is. Um, that's data that's sitting in a, somebody else's cloud that if you're gonna comply with GDPR or do something else, you need to understand you actually just turned on another cloud service. Whether you meant to or not, you did. And that's buried in your app and your customer or your corporate data is somehow interacting with it. Otherwise I'd argue, why'd you put the SDK in, right? It, then, then you've got code that shouldn't be in there because it's a security risk and to take it out. And so to me, when you go look at these things, you really need to actually get the mobile app expertise because it's not the same in terms of the way data over the air, uh, the way you secure them, the fact that you know I as an attacker have access to that device. I can reverse the code right, and really understand it and go look at it. It is very, very different um, from a web app and how you go do it. Now, as far as futures go, that's where things get even more interesting, but I'd argue they get more interesting, but they also get more dangerous because it's not just uh, VR and uh, IoT. Because when you look at IoT, think about what's going on. You have a lot of really fascinating things is I now have uh, basically an app on my mobile device that is connecting somehow to a physical element that is doing something. It could be unlocking a door of my house. It could be running a robot to vacuum my floor. It could be interacting with my car. So maybe it has a direct connection via Bluetooth. Maybe with some new 5G standards, I'm gonna use some new communications uh, app to app, right? That didn't exist before. And now I'm gonna be using new uh, transport protocols that also have never seen the light of day. That's gonna be fun. But uh, you also start to see a lot more of app to app communications. So now I'm gonna tell a uh, voice assistant to go interact and play music from a different app over speakers that de yet a different app. And so now you're seeing the chaining of apps together. And again, what is happening is all of these apps are also communicating with the cloud and sharing data across that common uh, layer. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity, right? When you look at, you know, what is the attacker gonna do? They're gonna exploit the seams. Well, think of all the different seams that were just created between the transmission of data between the apps to the cloud and that to me is one where it's unstoppable because the convenience factor is fantastic. 
right? The fact that I can actually tell my voice assistant to run my robot or I can check on this or that and go do it, that's, that's going to happen. So on the flip side for us as security practitioners and as how do we go do digital transformation, we need to just think through those things and make sure that we're taking the appropriate steps to get ahead of it, to lock it down, to secure it, to understand it, that you know, mobile is very different from web and to treat it as such. And like I was saying before, none of this is actually that difficult to do. We just need to take the time to actually do it. You know, they talk about it takes a village. It's it's interesting listening to the two of you, and I'm imagining the world where to drive into my garage, walk into my house, turn on the music, and maybe set my groceries down is going to wind up being five apps and 10 cloud services just to make all that magic happen in the background. And so that whole world of transforming our experiences now is interconnecting many mobiles, many clouds, and many legacy systems, frankly, to, to make it all work. Now, to, to kind of bring this together, right, we have some folks here in the session that are focused on digital transformation. They may be chief, chief digital officers, chief technology officers, heads of marketing or operational parts of the business, less, less security centric. So, you know, when we think about the team effort here, right, Accenture shows that 79% that of executives report that the business functions are colliding with each other, not collaborating with each other. So, uh, first to Alan and, and then to Patty. So what should the digital transformation leader be asking of their security teams and vice versa? Yep. How does that partnership come together? Thanks. Um, so actually, I would even back up a little bit more, right? I think that that digital transformation leader, the first question they should be asking as it relates to mobile, right, is how important is this mobile app to my business? What's the traffic? What's the revenue? What's the growth, right? How strategic is it in terms of long-term? Where am I going, right? Is it the primary means that I want to interact? Uh, I want the consumer to interact with me? Um, because to me, we still see in digital transformation where the mobile app is kind of the primary vehicle, but it doesn't get treated as the primary vehicle um, because folks aren't thinking through what is that long-term strategic goal? How do I want to and expect to interact with the customer? And I bring it back to that demographic shift that is very real. I would argue that is the place you start before you even go to the security team to ask those questions is how important is that mobile app to you? Because that's also what the security team needs to know is, well, where should I be applying resources? I don't have infinite resources. So how do I go and make sure uh, that I can give you the appropriate level of security? Then when you do go talk to your security team, you know, you should ask them, right? What are you doing to make sure that this app is secure? And I would argue it's always secure because what we see as common as happening is folks are releasing software on a mobile app on average, uh, I'd say once a month, but they're doing security testing once a year. All right, well, that's a real problem because you've got 11 releases that you are putting the organization and your brand at risk uh, without sufficient testing. So to me, it's not just, did you test it? It's, well, did you always test it? How can you ensure me that it's always secure? And the other piece I would say is, we are big fans on standards. We are big fans on saying, you, we could test something infinitely. Right. The, the best way to make sure that it can't be breached is don't deploy it. Um, OK, that's really not a good way to grow your business. So that's unlikely it's going to happen. So you could test infinitely. There's always more to go do. Right. I you know, will pick on Microsoft Exchange as the best example of something that could be tested infinitely. But yet we keep finding issues on it. So there's always more to be tested. So to me, picking the appropriate uh, well, defining the level of risk of the app and then picking accepted common industry standards that should be applied that are proportional to that risk, that is the best way to go and work with the security team to say, this is what I want you to make sure that this app is always at, at least this level of security. And then it also has the added benefit is you can go to the customer and you can go to regulators and say, I can prove that this app always meets this minimum standard that is an accepted industry standard. And I think it gives the consumer confidence, it gives the business uh, confidence in terms of what they're doing, but it also, uh, let's just say, gives you some uh, liability protection as well that you took 
the appropriate and reasonable uh, standards and precautions to protect your customers in the business. So Patty, if we think about the cloud, right? You know, what, what should our digital transformation leaders who are attending today be asking of their security teams and vice versa when we look at the cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud kind of world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's something that we encounter almost every other day. And it's a, ch it's a challenge for these digital leaders because one, uh, when you ask the security teams these questions, they are also in a learning phase. So they, they're going to give you a lot of uh, ready-made replies. They're going to say, oh yeah, we, we, we have some services enabled from AWS. We can get some visibility or controls over there. We have some security controls enabled in Google. What you should be asking them is, do you, we have moved these mobile apps, these web apps, or we have moved our critical workloads to the public cloud. Maybe we have adopted a multi-cloud poster. Do we really know of all the inventory that uh, uh, we've moved to the cloud or you know, any of our business verticals have spun up in the cloud? Do we have them classified? Do we have them tagged appropriately by business criticality? And then can you assure us that uh, we have complete and round the clock visibility into the security controls around these workloads or data or identities. That is where the challenge is, because you don't you don't want uh, a, you don't want your security team to say, well, uh, we have some script that will go ahead and scan your environments once a day. No, the the cloud brings with it a lot of ephemerality. There is there is a lot of stuff that can be you know done by a hacker in literally seconds. They can be in and out of your cloud environment, uh, do a lot of damage, uh, remove and uh, take away all of that digital proof. And then you may have a solution that scans one hour later. And then you'll, you'll, the, the, the assumption would be, yeah, everything is okay. So the question is, you should be asking is, do we have the ability to detect real time? security incidents in the cloud. You may have solutions that may go ahead and you know give you assurance maybe every every two hours, every four hours, every day. But the need of the hour, especially in the cloud, is because you know I was talking about the incident where one of our customers by mistake, they checked in a IAM access key and secret access key uh, into a public GitHub repository. Within seconds, a bot picked it up. Uh, their cloud infrastructure was stacked. Uh, but the good thing is uh, because they, they had very least privileges granted to that identity, the amount of uh, damage that was done was minimal. But in a lot of cases, it could be much worse, right? The, the damages that somebody could do is catastrophic. So from a digital transformation or even from a CIO perspective or a CISO perspective, that's the question you should be asking. Do we have good control coverage across all of the key resources in the cloud, mainly compute, storage, identities, and uh, networks. Do we, uh, does our SOC teams have the bandwidth to handle this? Are they, are they trained on how to triage and how to uh, 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 solve this? And then if there is, uh, if there is a responsibility model that needs to be built in where a lot of a lot of applications move to the cloud, right? You have a lot of mobile apps moving to the cloud. You have a lot of web apps moving to the cloud. These are essentially project teams who are responsible for that. It is not the, the onus is not on uh, the security team. So there are a lot of best practices that you need to follow in the cloud. Okay, enable this logging, enable versioning, all low and medium severity findings uh, from any uh, uh, cloud security product. Now, is that what your SOC teams should be concentrating on? No, they should be looking at your imminent threats, right? What is what is uh, is your are your servers exposed to the internet? Do you see any anomalies in your network? How do you audit, triage, do forensics on that? Whereas you should build in a model where you can pass on the responsibility to your project teams. Uh, and we have a lot of organizations who are using a product to build that successful model where you say, well, the project teams are responsible for this. So they, they go and hand over a report that gives a good detailed finding on all the cloud audit uh, uh, alerts that we have figured out and also give them good detailed steps on how to go ahead and fix it. So that's, that's my take on that. So uh, gentlemen, we have a couple of good questions that just popped in. So uh, you're inspiring good thought from the audience. So uh, the first one, let's uh, maybe Patty then Alan, 
uh, quick answers to this. Where does mobile security and cloud security converge? Is cloud security equally important with mobile security and how does that come together? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there, is, there is no picking one versus the other, right? There are a lot of security controls that you should obviously bake into your mobile apps and Alan can talk further on that. But at the end of the day, you're moving these apps to the cloud. When you're moving these apps to the cloud, there are, you're spinning up servers that are running these apps, that you're, you're storing these uh, your data in some databases, maybe in storage entities that the cloud service providers uh, support. And essentially, when you're moving this, you're also configuring how your identities that are in-house to the application, your mobile apps are able to access it, right? And if you, in, in retrospect, if you look at a lot of the hacks that have happened in the cloud, everything started with a compromised identity. And why, and in the most of the worst cases, right? Why did the attacker have the ability to go ahead and misuse your cloud environment? It was because the identity that they breached had a lot of permissions that it was not supposed to have. Does, you, does that identity need access to uh, access five different servers, two different, uh, two other cloud accounts? No, but you know, when, uh, when you designed it or maybe when somebody requested access for it, they said, oh, hey, give me administrator access. That's, uh, and someone forgot to take it off. That's usually what happens in most organizations. So yes, there is convergence. Uh, one, uh, both are equally important and uh, one actually supplements the other. Yeah, and Alan, I think I'm going to steer the next question for you to answer first. And Patty, if you want to add to it, a uh, good question from Ken here. How do you enable technology R&D and innovation at the same time and insist on proper security controls, i.e., how, how do you have the cake you need it too? Um, the application of security controls can, of, controls can often be seen as stifling innovation, but that innovation is needed in order to move the business forward. So how does this come together in real reality to get speed and security at the same time? Well, so Brian, so I'm actually gonna go back and answer the prior question and then I'll get to this one because I love the prior so question and I, I cannot control myself. So, cause it's a fantastic question. And if folks haven't kind of seen the whole point of our doing this thing today is that mobile and cloud are two sides of the exact same coin, right? Mobile is the endpoint that connects to the cloud, you know, one without the other. You look at the traffic growth and things like that. So they are inexplicit, inexplicitly, or inexplicably, excuse me, intertwined, right? Now, to specifically, where do they uh, interconnect? It's the API, right? That is how that mobile app, that mobile app connects to and gets the services in the cloud is through the APIs. And so understanding that mobile app and the usage of APIs and security testing of that, really, really important, right? That's your gateway into the uh, enterprise in the cloud. That's the mobile app uses it. So I wanted to go back and make sure that was clear, right? It was specifically, it is that API um, and that usage. Now, leaning forward, you know, to this question about the R&D and the innovation, I would say there's two things uh, that while they are in conflict historically, this is what I think is wonderful about digital transformation is the opportunity to remove that conflict. And here's the way you do it. And that is automation, automation, automation. There is not enough uh, security talent, nor is there enough time to basically go and say, I should be doing security testing the exact same way I'm doing functional testing. Right. Why we do it differently is a mystery to me. It makes no sense to me. Somehow security has become this post facto mystery thing that we do. And that's where you look at DevSecOps and, uh, you know, the opportunity to get to basically build security testing into the development process. And you can only do that with automation. Now, here's the other problem that I see that has occurred, and that is security would never tell development what the rules were. And partly because security didn't always know because they weren't necessarily experts in this. And this is where standards come in. Because if we can get an agreed upon set of rules, it is much easier to automate. It is much easier to interact between the security team and the development team. Because when you violate an issue in a previously agreed upon standard, it's quite clear it needs to be fixed before that is escalated or promoted to production. Right, so we've got agreed upon standards in the same way you would with functional testing uh, and other such things. I would actually argue that it's a more, it's a brighter line 
on security testing because I can look at, okay, did you use certs properly? Did you, you know, uh, put PII uh, out over the air, right? Those are pretty clear things, whether you did or did not do those uh, and whether they do or do not need to be uh, corrected. So in our view, that's what I love about digital transformation is a lot of those issues that have historically been built into the process that created conflict and slowed things down just tremendously slowed things down and didn't allow the organization to be flexible and to change rapidly, those can all be addressed with automation and standards. So we'd like to, to move into successes and wins for organizations that have been successful. So Patty, maybe first with you, you can you share us an example of success of an organization that's doing mobile digital or excuse me, digital transformation in the cloud as a key takeaway? Yeah, so I could highlight uh, one of our premier customers in the U.S., Equifax. You know, uh, they were also one of the our early adopters uh, for the cloud security solution. You know, there was this uh, breach that everyone talks about, the the Equifax breach, and post that, uh, they had they went all in onto the cloud, right? So the the decision was well, let us look at the amount of flexibility security teams can garner by bringing in the cloud that, so that we can have two or three uh, areas of completeness, right? One is uh, full visibility into my assets in the cloud, full control coverage, and then obviously the ability to scale and uh, adopt faster. Uh, but if you look at an organization like Equifax or for that matter, an organization of that scale trying to implement a cloud uh, uh, or a digital transformation initiative. And as part of that, trying to bake in security, you're going to do shopping for multiple solutions, right? These multiple solutions are going to come in and then start detecting stuff in your infrastructure, right? It's not, uh, you, you can start with the preventative controls, but what happens today in the industry is detection. You a, a CSPM solution, for example, comes and tells you, well, we have found all of these issues in your cloud and in, in, uh, infrastructure. Uh, Equifax, for example, when uh, they, they started uh, this uh, initiative, uh, they started with around, say, 500 cloud accounts. They then moved over, and, and I think up, as of last month, probably they have around 2,000, 2,500 cloud accounts. They are multi-cloud. So when you look at that, it's a, it's a great example of an organization uh, trying to achieve good visibility into their multi-cloud poster, implementing a solution that gives them that level of access, and then trying to implement or enforce their uh, security practices on different clouds. And if you are an organization trying to say, well, let me enforce my organizational best practices on AWS, Azure, GCP, there is a learning curve. What we have done uh, with Equifax and you know, for that matter, for with every customer is we have created a policy engine that a lot of customers can now use to start creating their own custom controls for the cloud. And they have used it extend, extremely well. And uh, the other part of the skill gap. Now, this is a reality in this industry, right? Uh, every other organization is going to face this today. There is a skill shortage there. So then how do you address security? So they've created a great program where the onus of uh, fixing issues, especially the low, medium severity issues are passed on to the corresponding project teams. Uh, and then we have continuous discovery going on in their environments where you know once a project team fixes something, then your compliance standards go green in that environment. Similarly, we are also enabling their uh, security teams by giving them focus on uh, the top risk items that they should look at. You'd be cutting up, trying to cut out all of the noise and then tell, hey, you have these five things that you need to look at at priority because these are, good. These are an imminent threat to your cloud infrastructure. And uh, they, 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 they are also one of the first organizations in the world to start exposing the uh, the, the uh, visibility of their real-time cloud compliance to their cust end customers. So there are multiple customers to which Equifax is saying, hey, you can come in and now see the real-time compliance status of our cloud controls. I don't think any other organization does that today. And we have a key module which, the, which they leverage where, wherein you can invite an uh, auditor and show them uh, what is your cloud, cloud compliance score. So yeah, that's a, that's a great example. So Alan, how about you wind us down here with an example of mobile digital transformation success? 
Uh, so I'll be quick because I know we're running uh, short of time. Is that you know we had a healthcare uh, client, still have actually, good to news, uh, in the U.S. That, that was looking to consolidate. Uh, I think it was uh, six or seventy different web properties across multiple brands because they'd done acquisitions over the year and multiple mobile apps because they had different things where they were doing patient record sharing or home healthcare. Uh, you know. Uh, providing home health care, you know, which heart rate, those sorts of things, and also doing patient scheduling. So it was a collection of stuff. And they wanted to dramatically change the patient experience and one place to go to do all of those things across their different brands as well. So it also needed to be flexible because uh, you also have different regulatory regimes of requirements across uh, different states in the U.S. So it was rather complicated uh, item. Before they wrote a single line of code, and this was important, they designed the architecture and picked the tools to do the automation and security of that so that they could get that right from the beginning. That, uh, in my opinion, made a massive difference in terms of their ability to implement, but also improve their probability of success. And, you know, they've rolled it out. It has dramatically streamlined their business. Uh, it gives them much more speed and flexibility than they had before because it was designed uh, from the ground up to be able to do it. Um, but more importantly, they now have a single and secure way to interact with their customers, right, in their position for growth. So that worked out really, really well for them. But it was the planning. They, they did a really good job of laying the foundation. All right. So as we're just about to wind down at the end of time, a 30 second fastball for each of you, which is what's one key takeaway if people do nothing else tomorrow what's one key takeaway that you would recommend folks on the session today address and i'll start with you patty on that look at your identities in the cloud they are your one of your top most vectors understand who are your power users understand what are the privileges that have been granted to them make sure that they don't need privileges uh, that are not used anymore so find out what is getting used there are services in AWS, Google, and Azure, which will give you that uh, report. Uh, make sure you download those reports and then uh, try to curtail permissions for the users that uh, do not need that. That is one big way to cut down your threat surface in the cloud. And for you, Alan, in your 30 second wrap up, what's one key takeaway, one thing to do tomorrow immediately? Yeah, mobile apps are different from web apps. I beg of you, don't use web app security tools to secure your mobile apps. It does not work. You have a false sense of security. That's the one thing. Get it right. It's not hard to do, but they're different. Very good. Well, today's CEO to CEO conversation was brought to you by Now Secure and C3M. We appreciate both CEOs for spending their time today in our session. And thanks all of you for joining us as well. Um, as we mentioned earlier, everyone who attended and registered will be getting a recording. You get a link to that in a few days via email. We will be having future conversations as well for our Fireside Chat series. So thanks again for joining us. Have a great day, everyone, and make sure you secure your mobile cloud digital transformation. Goodbye now.